Hello everyone, in ILRDI series, today I'm going to discuss a set from CAT 2022, first slab. So, this set is regarding uh, block XX and block YY. It says the schematic diagram below shows 12 rectangular houses in a housing complex. House numbers are mentioned in the rectangles representing the houses. So, these are the house numbers. The houses are located in six columns, column A through column F and two rows, row 1 and row 2. The houses are divided into two blocks, block XX and block YY. The diagram also shows two roads, one passing in front of the house in row 2 and another between the two blocks. So these are the roads. Now it says some of the houses are occupied and the remaining ones are vacant. Some are occupied, some are vacant and are the only ones available for sale. So the vacant ones are available for sale, not the occupied ones. The road adjacency value of a house is the number of its sides adjacent to a road. For example, the road adjacency value of C2, F2 and B1 are 2, 1 and 0. C2, one road, another road. So two roads adjacent. So road adjacency for C2 is 2 for F2, you can see only one adjacent road, so that's why 1 and for B1, there is no road adjacent, so that's why it's 0. The neighbor count of a house is the number of sites of that house adjacent to occupied houses in the same block. For example, E1 and C1 can have maximum possible neighbor counts of 3 and 2. So C1, so one neighbor other neighbor adjacent to site so that's why c1 can have two neighbors two occupied houses adjacent to it and e1 can have one two three three neighbors so this must be occupied these houses must be occupied then we can say neighbor count will be one two or three now it says the base price of a vacant house is 10 lakhs and if the house does not have a parking. So if there is no parking, then the base price is 10 lakhs and 12 lakhs if it does. Now it says the quoted price of a vacant house is calculated as base price plus 5 into road adjacency plus 3 into neighbor count. Now it says the following information is also known. The maximum quoted price of a house in block XX is 24 lakhs in XX, maximum is 24. How do we calculate it? So how do we get 24? So base price could be 10 or 12. Road adjacency could be 5 or 10. And the neighbor count for any of the houses could be either 1 or 2 or 3, right? This can be 0 also. Uh, road adjacency, yes, this can be 0 also. So this into 3. Now, how do we get 24 from here? If you check, I can get 24 by 10 plus 5 plus 9. One road adjacent and three neighbors adjacent. Or I can get 24 if I take there is parking, so 12, then some of other two numbers must be 12. Now it could be either 5 plus 7, 7 is not possible, 10 plus 2, 2 is not possible, 12 plus 12, 3 into 4, in that case there should be 4 neighbor counts which is not possible any of these. So this is the only feasible case possible where we get 24. So which of these can have three neighbors? So it can be either B1 or B2. But in case of B1, there is no adjacent road. So it can only be B2. So B2 have total price 24 lakhs. And this is not occupied. This B2 must be vacant. And B2 has three neighbor count. That means this must be occupied, this must be occupied, this also must be occupied.
now using this information and one more information has been given here that row one has two occupied houses one in each block one in each block so basically in this block out of these three there must be one and only one house which is occupied so b1 is occupied a1 must be vacant c1 also must be vacant only using this much information we can solve two to three questions out of five only using this one that's that's amazing now next it says the minimum quoted price of a house in block yy is 15 lakhs and one such house is in column e in column e so either e1 or e2 have a price of 15 lakh then it says both houses in column e are vacant so e1 is vacant e2 is also vacant each of column d and column f has at least one occupied houses so d1 d2 at least one is occupied f1 f2 at least one is occupied it could be both occupied but it must be at least one occupied then it says there is only one house with parking space in block yy only one parking in block y now let's see what would happen here so in case of e1 and e2 we know that both of them are vacant so their base price could be 10 or 12 right road adjacency for e1 is 0 road adjacency for e2 is 1 so we can guess that 10 plus 5 15 we are getting minimum price is 15 and one of these two is 15 so e1 could be 15 10 plus 2 if e1 has parking plus 3 it's possible but e2 must have at least 15 it could be more than 15 also if there is some neighbor count d2 f2 e1 is not possible so in case of one parking exactly what we can say if we think about e1 these two are vacant out of d1 and f1 one of them one of them must be occupied as per second statement in row one has two occupied houses one in each block so out of d1 and f1 one of them must be occupied right what we can say let's say if f1 is not occupied if f1 is vacant what would be the price of f1 so it would be 10 plus now it says one of them has parking so 10 plus 2 plus this right and if we say this is vacant and this one is occupied what would be the price of e1 for e1 we can say it would be 10 plus 3 13 is the maximum we are getting that means e1 must have a parking right that means doesn't matter if d1 is vacant or occupied if f1 is vacant or occupied the neighbor count of e1 must be only one the road adjacency for e1 is zero so if there is no parking in e1 the price e1 can have is 30 but we know that in block yy minimum price is 50 that means the the house with the only house in block yy with a parking will be e1 so e1 has parking that means f1 doesn't have parking that means f1 doesn't have parking so what would be the price of f1 it would be 10 plus road adjacency is 0 neighbor count would be this is vacant this one about f2 f2 we can say it could be vacant it could be occupied both of them in that case what would be the price of f1 even if this is f2 is occupied the maximum selling price of f1 would be 30 which is not possible what does that mean it means that f1 is not vacant f1 is occupied so 
f if f1 is occupied d1 must be vacant right and we know that at least one of these two must be occupied hence d2 must be occupied and regarding f2 we know that in this column f1 and f2 at least one is occupied we already have f1 occupied so f2 could be either vacant or occupied we don't know we don't know. now we can move to the questions we can solve them very easily now let's see so it says how many houses are vacant in block xx so a1 c1 and b2 so exactly three houses are vacant question 2 it says which of the following houses is definitely occupied d2 yes a1 no f2 we can't say b1 yes so interesting two options are correct so yes and this was an error i guess the official answer was b1 so this was supposed to be b2 then only it makes sense otherwise there is any error i checked it once twice thrice like it's not easy to get something wrong here from cat but it happened last year and it happened this year also it says question 3 which of the following option best describes the number of vacant houses in row 2 number of vacant houses b1 or uh, it it's b2 it's e2 and it can be f2 also it may or may not be f2 so total it could be either 2 or 3 option 1 is correct question number 4 it says what is the maximum possible quoted price in lakhs of rupees for a vacant house in column e column e e1 we already know it's 15 lakh for e2 base price is 10 lakhs road adjacency 5 lakhs and it could be possible that f2 is also occupied in that case it will be 3 plus 3 two neighbor count so 6 lakhs so maximum possible price for e2 will be 21 lakhs so answer is 21 question 5 it says which house in block yy has parking space so that is definitely e1 option 4 so with that we are done with this solution i hope you understood it let me know in the comments if you have any kind of doubt thank you